simple. You know, there's really nothing uh, spectacular about uh, what he has said. And he, he, it's even self-explanatory. He did say that some people, he never said the president, and in any organization, including your own individual media houses, you have your editorial policies. And there are elements within your organizations that don't agree with those editorial policies, but they still work there. So it is not a spectacular thing. It is nothing to uh, glare about. It is merely a natural phenomenon in all organizations, in all institutions. You cannot have 100% of all the operatives in an organization seeing issues exactly the same way. However, it is the preponderance of views that matter, the mainstream. Now, in terms of the presidency, who is the power base? The commander in chief. He holds all the aces. So we do not expect that all his staff would actually see eye to eye with him, but they are still there. Because again, you also need perspectives from various angles. That is why we even say, uh, even uh, our own uh, principal, our presidential candidate, Ahmed Bola Tinumbu, I have always said it often, and I repeat it. One of his strengths is to accommodate dissenting views within his own milieu. And I have a personal experience of this, and I continue to have it. We sit down when we are strategizing and planning policies and all that. We argue a great deal. And it's one leader, in my experience, that has a very large heart whose horizon is so wide, who is so accommodating of opposing views, with a view to reaching a logical conclusion from which policies, germane policies, come out. And the example is what you have in Lagos today. So for Erufai, the, the governor of Kaduna State, stating the obvious, it's nothing to glare about. We know that mischief makers, the opposition, will latch on it and twist it out of context. But that is the, the way of the opposition, especially the opposition that we are contending with in Nigeria today. And I make bold to say, and you can quote me, the opposition, the PDP opposition that we have today in Nigeria has been conducting the most pernicious, divisive, abusive, invective, and most irresponsible campaign in the history of this country. They lack the issues. They have no issues, no track record, no, no nothing, no record of performance to put before the Nigerian voters. So what do they do? They resort to personal abuses, issuing, I mean, fabricating false, fake stories to denigrate our principal, our, our, our presidential candidate, Bola Metinobu, issuing and churning out all kinds of lies, ludicrous, ridiculous, and the mundane, because they have no track record of performance to push out to the public. And in any case, we absorb all of this. Why? Because we know that our candidate is the candidate to beat. He's the front runner in this race. And uh, where I come from, my part of the country, there is an adage that says that it is only the tree full of fruits that people throw stones at. You can't get anybody throwing stones at a tree that is barren, that is bare. So the PDP and others are barren, they are bare. So Ashiwaju is the only fruitful candidate, and that's why all of them are throwing stones at him. We understand that. But that has never won them any election. And this will not be different. It will also not win them this election, because Nigerians are designing. They can see through their shenanigans. Thank you. Oh, of, look, the most important person 
in the presidency that I've said. He's the president and commander-in-chief, and the man has reiterated it often and often and often that Bola Metinubu is his party's candidate. And he has appealed that you should vote for him. He's the one who is coming to consolidate on his achievements and address whatever challenges remaining. And why? Because he has the managerial competence, he has the administrative acumen, he has the track record of experience and performance. Look, it is not a fluke. Neither Atiku, nor Obi, nor any other person in the horizon contending today for the presidency can point at lasting legacies that they have left in the areas or in the, in anywhere they ran before in public office. Obi was governor for eight years. Point at any enduring legacy of Obi today in Anambra. Atiku was vice president for eight years. Point at any enduring legacy, whether in Adamawa or even in Nigeria, that was an initiative of Atiku that you can point at today. Now, when I begin to reel out the enduring legacies, envisioned and executed by Ashiwa Jubola Metinubu. It's a litany. It goes on and on. So therefore, and I often said, Nigerians are the employers. These people are applicants. They are applying for the job of the presidency of Nigeria. Now, if you are on a panel to interview applicants, what's the first thing you ask for? Their CV, their experience, track record of performance so that you can make an informed judgment. So if these people bring out their track record of performance, experiences, exposure, whether in politics, in democratic struggle, in governance, in envisioning, in demonstrating knowledge, or projecting courage, they are nowhere to be found. Ashiwaju stands heads and shoulders above any of them, sentiments apart, emotions apart. Thank you.